Welcome to the tarot for December 2021. Um, as I was getting ready to do the tarot reading, um, I just, I kept wondering, well, what questions should I ask? And nothing, nothing, nothing was coming to me. So after several days of delay and I still had no questions that I thought might be helpful or instructive, you know, for us, um, the U.S., the world, I finally got out my cards and I just started shuffling them very slowly, giving myself directions to come up with a question. And after a long time of shuffling, I heard this little voice inside say, ask the cards to show you the questions that you must ask and answer over this next month. So I ended up drawing three cards, thinking, well, maybe I can come up with at least one or two questions out of those three cards. And it ended up being a lot more. So the first card I drew was the Four of Wands. The second card was the Two of Pentacles, which we've seen before just last month. So evidently, we're not done with this. And the last card was Death. This is a major, major challenge. So after studying them for a while, um, there's a couple of things. I ended up coming up with several questions for each one. So let's start with a four of wands. So we've, you know, we've seen this card before, um, but let's look at it this time from new points of view. So the elements in the card, which you can see just by looking at it, are the yellow background. The sky and the earth are both yellow. And that indicates a need to use our heads to observe what's going on and to stop the fantasies and the emotions and engage in practical, intellectual, logical assessment. Absolutely needed right now. In the background on this card, really quite prominent, um, there's a large gray castle with no doors and only one window. And the one window is way up at the top of the tower. So that symbolizes power. A castle almost always symbolizes power and the homeland as well. Your home is your castle. But there's no way to reach it. There's no way to get into that. There's no doors. There's no windows. So it's, it symbolizes inscrutable, which means unreadable. Can't figure it out. Can't read it. And unreachable power to which we have no access. And the castle also symbolizes security. And it can bring in the nuances of foreign dominion. Are we being managed by someone who is not managing in our own interests? So another factor in this card or another symbol is the bridge. There's a bridge down here. And it, that's the symbol of needing to bring opposing sides together. That is so important. I was listening to a radio program last Sunday called the Commonwealth Club. It comes out of California. And when I get a chance, I listen to it. They have speakers every week. And there was a woman who came, and I, I'm not going to say her name. I don't even think I heard her whole name. But um, there was a lot of hoopla about this is a Democrat or Republic, uh, Democrat or a uh, liberal um, person, very progressive, etc. And um, and so she started talking, and I was stunned to hear all the same concepts, all the same complaints, all the same words even, describing the conservative side exactly the way that we describe them. And it was clear that we are all seeing the same issue. We're all seeing the same problems. We're all complaining about the same thing. What's the problem here? Both sides want somebody to blame. We don't need to be blaming one another. We just need to look at what is and say, hmm, 
this is what's going on. And then figure out where do we go from there. So that bridge symbolizes bringing opposing sides together by realizing we're both saying the same thing. We're just looking for somebody to blame. And the blame is not necessary and it gets in the way. So another um, factor in here, you see several people. There's two very small people here in the center. Uh, they're waving something that looks like either flowers or bouquet or something or other. And your first impression is maybe life is good, but you really can't tell. Um, they might be waving these bouquets or these um, pom-poms or whatever they are, trying to get attention to say we need help. And um, there's a small circle of people in the background. You can't really tell what they're doing. Are they dancing? Are they gathering in a circle for protection? So that's another element. And then you have this structure, kind of a structure, made of the four wands. And two of the wands have a garland of flowers and fruit connecting them. The other two are unconnected. And that really um, says that some people are maybe doing okay. They have flowers and fruit, but the others are unconnected. Half are unconnected. Half are not getting what they need. Half are not being taken care of. There's no flowers and fruit for them. The ones are arranged almost like a gateway. And so it looks like um, there's an initiation or a path or a process that is that we are being invited into. So the card overall is very high energy. Um, the I would point out, I, I want to say something about the size of the wands compared to the size of the people. Um, you can barely see the people here. Um, the two down here at the bottom are, are visible, but the rest you can barely see in the background. And look at how, how this fellow fills the whole card. Of all the cards in the deck, these, these people on, in this card are the smallest. And the size and proportion, that's relevant. That's symbolic. So um, the, the fact that the um, the card itself has to do with the homeland. Um, this is a quote right out of the book. It says, this card symbolizes, quote, we have never been in greater danger of being sold short or cast as irrelevant than the situation we are in at the moment. The people are irrelevant. You can barely see them. Nobody's paying attention to what do the people say? What do the people want? What do the people think? So that's a warning right there. We are in danger. Um, the Overall, this card has to do with the homeland, with settlements, and pioneering, and, um, and the Number four itself symbolizes the need to focus on creating a secure and enduring foundation for life. And we're supposed to do that through love and kindness and to include all. So, yeah, you know, so let, let me keep going. Uh, the wands are the symbol of fire. And that indicates transformation through hot, fiery, sometimes sudden change. The Four uh, of Wands, the card itself, represents something called the Lord of Completion or Perfected Work. And what that says is that we're at the end of an era, that something is coming to a close. A new door is opening and we will be pulled in a new direction. And so it indicates that when you have uh, a closing, you have an opening. So there's a period of initiation coming. And it's interesting that the four, the number four, 
indicates four months. And this card itself is associated with Venus in Aries, which refers to March. So when you put the four months and the March together, it points <clears throat> quite strongly to the completion of this chapter over the next four months and the initiation into something new in March, which is exactly four months from now. So the questions that came up around this card are, first one, there were three questions, how do we bring opposing sides together? How do we really listen to one another? And, and you know, identify what is it we all want? Because we all aren't going to get anywhere blaming anybody. Justice will be done but not through blaming and pointing fingers and all of that. Second question, can we proceed into the future without a secure and enduring base from which to operate? If we lose our homeland, if we lose what our homeland represents, which is freedom and security, we're not going anywhere. We don't even have a future if we let that happen. And the last question is, what do we have to do to complete this chapter and initiate a new chapter? Preferably one that we write in such a way that everyone is engaged in rebuilding and regeneration. And that rebuilding and regeneration would be of us and the planet. What do we have to do to complete this chapter? This card represents the Lord of Completion. So, the next card, which fit right in with that, was the Two of Pentacles. Now, this card, like I said, came up last month in response to the question, what do we need to know and do regarding our financial system? And here it is again. So, either we are not asking the right question or we're not finished with what this represents. And what it represents is a very interesting combination of money, material things, and the expansion of consciousness needed in order to come to terms with an entire array of challenges, contradictions, and problems that plague us. This card forces us to deal with the ugly side of life, the painful, the corrupt, the seamy side of life. So if you look at the card, you know, we've gone through this before, but let's go through it again for anybody who hasn't seen earlier um, uh, descriptions of this card. So you see a figure dressed in red leggings, a large red hat, very tall, green shoes, and a tunic that has many buttons on it, and an uneven ragged hem. So the red symbolizes anger, passion, energy, and rebirth. And the leggings are, are bright red. So we're, what do we use legs for? We use legs to move forward, to walk, to run, to do whatever. The legs support us. That says that we're angry. That there's some passion and some energy facing us or coming from us and that we need to face our rebirth. The large red hat um, symbolizes the ego and an attitude. And, and the attitude is one of, I know what I'm doing, you know. But in thinking that we know, we're ignoring what we don't know or what we don't want to deal with. And so the large red hat indicates that the ego has us thinking, oh, we can handle this and we're going to manage this and, and, and da, da, da. But we're ignoring many things and maybe several things are critical. The green shoes point to a lack of experience in dealing with the situation that we're in. You know, you don't have this kind of world chaos every every year 
And the many buttons on the tunic indicate an overabundance of irritations and angers. And people are easily able to push buttons that generate drama, anger, all kinds of stuff. And then the unhemmed tunic symbolizes an unwillingness to be told what to do. It's a refusal to be hemmed in. There's no hem on this, on the tunic. It's a refusal to be controlled. So in the background, you see a few ships navigating very large waves in that ocean or that sea. And that indicates great waves of emotion, huge waves of emotion. And since shipping has to do with trade and the business of life, it may indicate that a great many people are ignoring the dangers that would result from a collapse of our supply chains and the possibility of needing to be organized um, or at least thinking about how are we going to take care of ourselves and one another and make sure everybody has what they need if the big corporations and their supply lines fall apart or are temporarily disabled. So is that what people are ignoring? The blue background, uh, the blue sky has several meanings. One is good. It's a relaxed attitude with, um, you know, clarity. But the sky is so big and wide and undefined that it's difficult to see where to begin. And the last meaning is that the Blue sky indicates a state of having the blues, being sad, somewhat depressed. So the uh, character here in the center of the, of the card is standing on a gray earth. And gray symbolizes neutrality or detachment. And these are good for staying clear enough to really see the issues and not get caught in some kind of paralyzing stress, which is really that kind of detachment is needed in times of change. Because this card, more than many of the others, symbolizes a massive change in daily life, outlook, routines, and problems to be handled. So the problems we think we're handling are not the problems we need to be handling. And this card says it's going to come and we're going to have to face it. So uh, there's a lot more in this card that fits in with, you know, we've never been in greater danger that comes with this card, the Four of Wands. So what you see here are two pentacles at either end of, of an infinity symbol. And they represent the good side of life and the ugly side. The lawful side and the unlawful side. The honest side and the corrupt side. So they remind us that we have to be willing to face it all. We have to be willing to face the seamy, sordid parts of life. And we're going to learn how to get beyond them. When we face them, we can heal them. And this results in the bright and beautiful side of life. Um, the last thing I want to point out on this card is that the there's a large green infinity symbol. That symbol, that shape is called a lemniscate, L-E-M-N-I-S-C-A-T-E. And that lemniscate is the, what we call the infinity symbol, and it stands for hope. So... Um, if you look at the symbol it's itself, what you see is that in the very center, the lines cross. And that indicates that we're at a crossroads. Decisions have to be made. And they will be made, either because we said so, or by default, somebody else will make those decisions. So um, we have to make some decisions for ourselves about what we want and how we're going to move forward into our future. Um, you also see that this infinity symbol is mostly in a horizontal position. 
Horizontal position means that challenges and problems are coming from the external world rather than the internal side of ourselves. We're not making stuff up. So the, the fact that it's at a little bit of an angle indicates that it's mostly, the problems are mostly coming from the external world and it's not vertical, but it's tipped up just a little bit, and that indicates that we need to be very careful with our perception. Are we seeing clearly? That's the problem coming from within. And misdiagnosing, not assessing, not responding, not reacting to what we're, what's coming at us from the external world. So... Um, the 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 whole card it really deals with elements basic elements of life and and so that what that says is that the challenges that we're facing are basic elements they're not things that we can do without we really can't do without security without freedom and there's a couple other things in this card that I think are very, very important that we'll come to in just a moment. So the whole card itself, um, it, it really echoes the message from this card that we just looked at, which has to do with the need for a secure foundation. That's elemental um, in order to operate. And the last thing I would point out um, is that one end of the figure eight um, symbolizes the old world and the other end symbolizes the new world. And the crossroads point right in the middle shows that the old world shrinks right down to nothing. It reinforces the need to be ready to deal with temporary upsets, shortages, and uncertainties while still moving full steam ahead into reorganizing and rebuilding the new world. So overall, this card has to do with facing change, contradictions, problems, all sorts of injustices and manipulations, and the ugly side of life in order to return to balance, peacefulness, and beauty. Uh, the two, the number two up at the top is associated with the need to make decisions that reconcile opposites. Same message as the bridge over here. So reconcile opposites in ways that use wisdom and inclusiveness without being naive or foolish. We can't be pie in the sky. So the two demands dialogue and diplomacy while taking a firm stand on the ground of ethics and cooperation. Cooperation from everyone involved. So that's just the symbolism of the number two. Time to make decisions. Time to reconcile accounts. The two of pentacles is especially connected to written material. And especially written material that agitates or causes trouble that leads to embroilment and entanglement. This card represents embroilment. So again, we have uh, challenges that have to be faced. The Two of Pentacles um, is really, um, it's, the whole card itself represents what we call the Lord of Change. So here we have the Lord of Completion and the Lord of Change. So what that says is we're coming to a period, a point, where change is going to bring us to complete or to end a chapter of our life. And we're going to have to build something new. So the questions that arise from this, are we ready to deal with the changes being created by the times we live in? We can't just continue to say, oh, it'll get better tomorrow. Oh, we're going to go back to normal. Second question, are we ready to deal with the ugly, seamy side of life in order to clean up corruption? This is the card of facing corruption. 
Isn't that coincidental, quote unquote, coincidental? <laughs> and then the third question is, can we allow ourselves to expand our ideas of what and how the world should be, could be? This card also represents um, the expansion of consciousness. Or they, it's actually the expansion of awareness that then drives consciousness into action. So, Lord of Change. Okay, last card ah, was Death. Okay, this is a major arcana card, which means that there is a major challenge in our lap. So, Death, the, you know, that's pretty blunt. It says that something comes to an end. Have we heard that before? Change, completion, something comes to an end. It's time for the Grim Reaper to begin his harvest. So what this says is that we are going to harvest what we have sown. We are the sowers and we are the reapers. We're not helpless victims here. So this card carries a couple of messages. One is that it's really important to allow the sadness and tears um, that come with a loss of something or someone that you love. And the other is to be glad and celebrate when something awful stops. So this card is the death or the transformation, total transformation of something in life, something that was alive. That could be anything from your husband or your child or your mother or your father or your sister or your brother to your neighborhood, to your country, to your planet. So change. Okay, this card also carries um, a, both a warning and a demand. And the warning is, um, do not die before you're dead. You get what that says? Do not quit living before you actually die. In other words, don't give up, stop living, and just drift through um, your existence, playing the role of the victim, helpless, can't do anything. Don't die before you're dead. The demand associated with this card is a, a demand for positive aggression and the strength to bring about necessary, even radical change. It's like, whoa. <laughs> okay, now let me just repeat that. The demand of this card is a demand for positive aggression and the strength necessary to bring about, or the, the strength to bring about necessary, even radical change. So it, all things come to an end. If you look at the card closely, you see a gray sky, a need for detachment and letting go for neutrality, yet without being callous or indifferent. That's very, very important. And that's an art to be able to detach and not need vengeance. So another thing we see is a skeleton dressed in a suit of black armor. And that points to the fact that the world we once had has died. We're living now with the skeletal remains of what used to be. The suit of armor tells us we can try to arm ourselves against death and change, but what we're trying to protect is not worth saving because only the bones are left. Why would a skeleton need a coat of armor? Why would a world that's already dead and gone need protecting? So, the color black represents the great void from which all things come, and thus the eventual need to tap into that void and begin creating anew. It's time for something new. So, the skeleton 
is riding on a white horse. And that white horse symbolizes death, winter, and the completion of something. Sound familiar? <laughs> okay. Change, completion. So um, it also symbolizes the subconscious mind. And I don't really separate the mind into conscious, subconscious, superconscious, and all that. There's only consciousness. And the, the field that we are paying attention to is the sum total of your consciousness. The rest of it is still there. It's not sub anything. It's just something you're not paying attention to. So the white horse symbolizes, according to the cards, all the things in consciousness that we're not paying attention to and the vitality and fresh ideas that can be ours if we will allow ourselves to tap into other areas of consciousness. The skeleton is carrying a black and white flag. It kind of looks like a, it has a flower on it. Um, but the black and white indicates the extremes of life and death. You're either alive or you're dead. There's no gray in this. The flower is composed of five ears of grain. And, and I want you to think about grain in the same way that we use the word when we refer to uh, going against the grain or something that is ingrained in us. So it's kind of the grain is akin to the fiber of your being. And the fiber then is woven into the fabric of your life and produces results. So here the flag symbolizes the message again that we are going to reap what we sow. We are going to live with what we weave. So the fabric of life um, is being rewoven right now. And this says, be conscious of that. What are you doing? Why are you doing it? Okay. The next thing that we see here is there's a king. He's uh, dead. He's on the ground. <laughs> He's laying on the ground at the feet of the horse. And the king has lost his crown and is lying dead, meaning that the head of a country or a leader or something or someone that was very important in life is no longer there. He's dead. So, you know, that means that whatever was important to you, whatever was leading you through life that you were pursuing, that's not there anymore. Okay. At the same time, um, we see a bishop. Um, he's wearing a yellow robe and a one of those big tall yellow hats and a bishop is a spiritual leader someone who guides and directs the spirit of his people but here he is without a staff and he's reaching out like he's praying for something like he needs guidance indicating that the spirit of ourselves the spirit of our country has been set free we are our own guides, our own spiritual directors. And the spirit of yourself is that wacky, wonderful you that we all try to tamp down on so that we fit in. Let that go. <laughs> let that come to the foreground and let that spirit guide you. The real spirit, not the fakey, religious -y, trying to fit in kind of spirit. And we see a couple of girls, uh, children, two young girls here symbolize the need to face death and to face the fact that something has come to an end and start over like children. You know, feminine means receptive, open, willing to receive. That means look, look around you. Be willing to see what you see. And don't be making excuses and, and uh, building all kinds of story around something. Just let it be what it is. So a um, couple other things we see in this card, very, very important. Uh, a ship is sailing down the river in the background. And that ship symbolizes the ship of souls that carries those souls from death 
to reincarnation. And what that says is we are all souls on the ship of little planet Earth and she is undergoing massive changes and we need to reincarnate new life for ourselves new ways of doing things taking the best of the old if i can use the, some of the low men of brown robes said frequently take the best of the old and build it or add it on to the the best of what you can come up with the best of the new put those two together and always bring the good stuff from the past with you don't let go of the good good stuff just let go of the bad stuff so um another thing here you see that the sun is coming up or we think it's coming up it could be going down um up here in the corner it's coming up or down and whatever it is if the sun is setting on an old empire or a new day is dawning on a new empire it's going to mean what we decide it will mean period it's up to us in other words and then the last uh thing there's two towers the sun is going down between these two towers and those two towers form something of a gateway while offering a higher perspective you can see the landscape and what's unfolding all around you when you're up high in a tower so death represents the cycle of birth uh, maturation decline decay and final endings and it it marks the transition to a new phase of existence and often that new phase is the result of radical change and destruction and the card asks us to allow the metamorphosis to begin so sadness may be unavoidable in this period of time and death may be pointing to the deaths of many more people than usual because of what we've been going through for the past couple of years but let's weather that and rebuild renew regenerate let's transform as we do so the questions that came up from this card are four First one, what do you plan to experience, to learn from, and to leave as a legacy of your life this lifetime? What do you plan to experience, learn from, and leave as a legacy this lifetime? Second question, are you ready to face the death of someone you love? That's a hard one. Third question, are you ready to face the death of your country? Since this reading was about the U.S. and our world. And the last question is, what no longer fits for us in our government, financial systems, or personal lives? What no longer fits? So together, I'm just going to sum up the questions that came up here so i'll just go through them all again i think we have about 10 questions how do we bring opposing sides together can we proceed into the future without a secure and enduring base from which to operate what must we do to complete this chapter of life and initiate a new chapter that we write in such a way that everyone is engaged in rebuilding and regeneration of both ourselves and our planet. <clears throat> Are we ready to deal with the changes being created by the times we live in? Are we ready to deal with the ugly, seamy side of life in order to clean up corruption and not be blaming? Can we allow ourselves to expand our ideas of what and how the world could or should be? What do you plan to experience, learn from, and leave as a legacy of your life this lifetime? Are you ready to face the death of someone that you love? Are you ready to face the death of our country? 
and maybe it's rebirth, I should add. And finally, what no longer fits for us in our government, financial system, or personal life? So there's some questions to chew on as we move through December. And uh, I'm going to close by saying Merry Christmas. I'll see you in January. Thank you for listening.